Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration of the 20, uh, 2021 Manila International Book Fair, sponsored by the Augustinians of the Assumption and the Living with Christ. The theme of our celebration is God, the God of the living and not of the dead. The resurrection of Christ is the highest peak of our Christian faith. This means that we are children of God and our resurrection of Jesus. In our gospel, Jesus was tested by the Sadducees, but the resurrection he taught them one valuable truth. God is the living God and our death is the passage to eternal life, not our destiny. We are invited to leave our calling as children of the living God. Our mass presider is Father Christopher Kinyai AA. Please join us in the singing of the entrance song. <laughs> Oh, 
this night to our day. May we all the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way. We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration in this fourth day of Manila International Online Book Fair. We continue to gather all our praise and thanksgiving for all the graces that we receive and also all our prayers and intentions, especially for the success of this book fair. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. As King Antiochus was tra transver traversing the inland provinces, he heard that in Persia there was a city called Elimais, famous for its wealth in silver and gold, and that its temple was very rich, containing gold helmets, breastplates, and weapons, left there by Alexander, son of Philip, king of Macedon, the first king of the Greeks. He went, therefore, and tried to capture and pillage the city, but he could not do so because his plan became known to the people of the city who rose up in battle against him. So he retreated and in great dismay withdrew from there to return to Babylon. While he was in Persia, a messenger brought him news that the army sent into the land of Judah had been put to flight, that Lysias had gone at first with a strong army and been driven back by the children of Israel, that they had grown strong by reasons of the arms, men, and abundant possessions taken from the armies they had destroyed, that they have that they had pulled down the abomination which he had built upon the altar of Jerusalem, and that they had surrounded with high walls for the sanctuary, as had been before any city of Benzur. When the king heard this news, he was struck with fear and very much shaken, sick with grief because his design had failed, he took to his bed. There he remained many days, overwhelmed with sorrow, for he knew he was going to die. So he called in all his friends and said to them, Sleep has departed from my eyes, for my heart is sinking with anxiety. I said to myself, Into what revelation have I come, and in what floods of sorrow am I now? Yet I was kindly and beloved in my rule. But now I recall the evils I did in Jerusalem when I carried away all the vessels of gold and silver that were in it, and for no cause gave orders that the inhabitants of Judah be destroyed. 
I know that this is why these evils have overtaken me. And now I am dying in bitter grief in a foreign land. The word of the Lord. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. Because my enemies are turned back, overthrown and destroyed before you, you rebuke the nations and destroy the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. The nations are sunk in the pit they have made. In the snare they set, their foot is caught. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor shall the hope of the afflicted forever perish. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. has destroyed them and brought life to light through the gospel. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry. But those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well and they no longer dare to ask him anything. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning once again, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In our gospel reading for today, we have Jesus facing some of the Sadducees. And it's seldom that we see Jesus with the Sadducees. We always hear about Jesus detested by the Pharisees and the scribes. Maybe this is the only instance that Jesus faced them or one of the few. But in this, the few of the Pharisees asked Jesus about resurrection. And because we know the Sadducees do not believe in the resurrection. Commentaries would say that because the Sadducees only focus on the Pentateuch or the Torah, the first five books of the Gospel. Comparing to the Pharisees and some scribes, they also read the Prophets and the Psalms. And in the first five books, there's no much mention about the resurrection. It's only with the Prophet and the Psalms that you will see the theme about the resurrection. So this, the Sadducees ask question based also on their tradition. That's why they introduce their question that teacher Moses wrote for us. So it means it's there based on their tradition. But they devise this case or this story to, to show that a resurrection can be sometimes ridiculous. So the story about seven brothers and about the wife. And we know the reason why this law was made because of a woman who became a widow and childless, he will be in a very terrible state. No one will take care of him, took of her, and no one can help her. So this uh, law that when a husband of a woman died and childless, it's the brother who will remarry the wife. And it's in the part of the tradition. But this precepts based on being dead or dying. That's why Jesus just simply rebut their premises by telling that those children who died in this age marry and remarry, but those who be worthy to attain the coming age and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor remarry or given to marriage. They can no longer die. So, just very simple. There are things that we need to do because the fact that we will die. But after resurrection, there is a different thing. So, marry, remarry is part of this work. And it speaks to us that there are things that we need to do while we are living in this world. Why we need to strive to be virtuous. Why we need to follow the commandments of God. Why we need to love God and our neighbor. It is in the fact that because we will die. But the other thing also, there are things in this world that we should not do. We should continue those people who continue not following the commandments. Those who are powerful who lord over others. Those who cause the sufferings of others. This thing should not be done because we will die. And as Jesus said in our gospel reading, that those who deem worthy to attain to the coming age, and to the resurrection of the dead. Meaning, we need to do the right thing for us to receive our own resurrection. Then, as Jesus continued to speak with the, with the Sadducees, then he continued to tell them that God is a living God. And those who died and resurrected is not anymore dead, but they are all living. And it speaks to us that the resurrection of Jesus 
is the tremendous outpouring of love for all of us. In his resurrection, Jesus as God is not anymore bounded by time and space. And he is become nearer to all of us. So the resurrection is the greatest gift of God for all of us. Then that's why we hear in the gospel reading that God is a living God. He is God not of the dead but of the living. And resurrection is a promise for all of us. Then the challenge for all of us is how we are going to receive this resurrection. Are we then worthy to be part of these people who will be resurrected? Then in the end of our gospel reading, some of the scribes told Jesus, Teacher, you have answered well, and they no longer dare to ask him anything. Because we know the scribes, they believe in the resurrection. For us, we believe in the resurrection, but we need to do something to gain the grace of this resurrection. A reminder for all of us, for us to be deemed worthy. Because what we are doing here on earth will be the one being judged if we are worthy of this resurrection. If we're going to go back in our first reading, this king, powerful king, so come to despair and loneliness because his plans were failed and he realized that he will die we will all die but i hope we receive the grace of resurrection amen Our God is the God of the living, for to Him all are alive. From Him we have our being and our perfection. Let us turn to Him in our needs as we say, Lord of life, hear us. Lord of life, hear us. For the church may she gather all her children, especially those who are struggling in their belief in Him, so they may truly feel the hunger for his love and for everlasting life. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. May all leaders of nations operate with one another in building the culture of life, peace, and solidarity, so all will be saved from poverty and death. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. May our annual participation in the Manila International Book Fair inspire all Filipinos to make reading not only a hobby but a way of life. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. For all those who are working tirelessly, we in the promotion of life from conception to natural death, be given more blessings, protection, and inspiration. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. May all Catholics who are participating in the ongoing Synod, may they be given the grace of choosing and proclaiming the value and sanctity of life of every person they encounter. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. For the souls of our beloved family members, relatives, friends, and benefactors, especially those who remember in this Holy Mass, and those enrolled in our Mass Guild, we pray. Lord of life, hear us. In the silence of our hearts, let us offer to the Lord our personal intentions. We pray. Lord of life, hear us. Father, because of your love, you created us and redeemed us when we sin through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Hear our prayers and continue to purify us that we may be worthy to be citizens of heaven. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Bless the Lord, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless the Lord God forever. Bless the Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of this day, but for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent, as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hand as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory as one voice we proclaim. <laughs> Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that we may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith mm -hmm. 
salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Be member of your church, straight to all the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Onesor Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And today we pray specially for our brothers, Bergmans Lefebvre, Benoit Joseph Sarché, Vitalien Laurent, Gerardus Marella Peters, André Pivet, Joseph Maurice. We pray for all our friends, benefactors, members of our master. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you to all the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As the viewers command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say. <laughs> Father, who are in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Amen. with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign. Peace be with you. We lay away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, 
not God be taken away the seats of the world, have mercy on us. Not of God be taken away the seats of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, would it be that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Now, prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer. His spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted His only Son, in you Mary place her trust, with you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph to us too, show yourself a Father, and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from COVID-19 and every evil. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for praying and participating in this online Mass. We, the Augustinians of the Assumption, are praying for you all. If you have prayer intentions, you may message us in our Facebook page, Augustinians of the Assumption, Manila, or you may send them in this online link. God bless you, and please join us again tomorrow in our online Mass. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our mass has been offered. Go in peace. And in the spirit of God. Father, oh, help me, Lord, 